right, well, I think we're in it. That's it. We started. Welcome oh, to Grounds After Rounds, folks. We're talking about our, uh, again, now that we're gone, like, visual. Right. We need to have, like, a visual presence. And right now, this pale white wall isn't doing it for me. I feel like it's washing me out a little bit. Um, it's, it's, not... tough to, it's tough to make you look bad, dude. Oh, pat ourselves on the back harder again? Again. <laughs> if I had a back buddy, I'd be patting myself even harder. But whatever. <laughs> I can be your back buddy. Okay. Okay. Thank God for social distancing. <laughs> yeah. Folks. I did this with the class yesterday. I was like, everyone touch my hand. Touch my hand. I miss you. <laughs> Ew, what's all over your hand? Are you write all right over Right now, I want everyone to, oh, Fiona drew on me. <laughs> Just pen. Because she doesn't, because she doesn't have the walls in the gym to draw on anymore. So she's exactly. drawing on you. <laughs> so she drew on, she drew, this is my, she drew her name. She wrote her name on my hand. Got it. That's what that is. Totally make that out. And then this is my name. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So. Oh man, yeah, we're in it. We're in it. All right, it's week two, week two of uh, quarantine of COVID deployment, deployment COVID, Operation COVID. Oh, I like Operation COVID better. Operation Corona, nah. Ooh. That's a different. I think that that's Corona. spring break. Corona paration. Corona per. What was it? The girls were saying on uh, Ellie's podcast the. Um... They were calling it coronacation. Coronacation. That was good. They were good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Ellie reached out to me. I'm going to get on. I'll get in touch with her about. We'll get her set up with. Um, when you think about it, send me the anchor. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I think you maybe already did. Anyway, we can talk about this stuff later. We're here. Grounds after rounds to talk about <laughs> something. I'll say, I'll say you, li did you listen to Ellie's, right? Did you listen to yeah. her? Yeah. Yeah. You get why I said like five minutes in, I had to shut it off and go cry for a few minutes, and then yeah, they were. Um... <laughs> it was like, Eric's, like Eric's, fine, Eric's but, great, uh, Nod. He's nice. Why Ellie's great? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I totally say, when, she, when she asked the question, I was kind of like, oh, I get what she's trying to say, but oh, and then they and then the girls just like rolled with it. I was like, okay, I know what they're saying. Like they're not. This is a here's Ellie. You're here now, and we're talking about the things that we enjoy about you, not that these are the things that are better that, than Eric. And then when Anna was like, you guys work really well together. I was like, okay, okay, I'm off the list. She, yes. um, I, I will say, Ellie did, a, Ellie did a great job of navigating that and bringing it back. Yeah. She acknowledged, <laughs> like, hey, I didn't mean for this to be a, I'm so great. And actually she didn't even say like, because no. they never said like, you weren't good. No, and that's what she, and I, that's what I said, when she said it, it was just kind of like, what's different, what's... Yeah, and it know, was... Um, this guy's been doing it forever. Um, I so. just, we really like how you have the, the plan of the class written up on the board, and all of our PRs are so neatly organized, and then there's Eric at like 4.15, and you're hey, let's get going with the class now, guys. Coming from, Anna, coming, that was, coming from Anna, by the way, who never gets here until like, she gets here like 10 minutes late every day. Just FYI. A little, let's put a little, uh, like, uh, Anna, just, the barbers are always... <laughs> Yeah, it was, um, uh, I will say, you know what it is? It's, um, it's telling of your leadership skills that you naturally surround yourself with people who continue to make you better but also round out the things that you know hey that's not that's not something that i'm willing or yeah. wanting or you know need to i'll i can get somebody else to do that right like yeah. hey I, i'll get somebody to keep me organized i'll get some of that that's your strength is your creativity your strength is your freedom and your ability to like organically make things feel what like like everybody in a room around you feels like they are the only person and the most important person in the room. And that requires a looseness in uh, a flexibility in the schedule. Yeah, there you go. Good shoulders. But I mean, seriously, like that's, that's a thing where for me, I know for a fact, like gets more than three or four people. None of Time you out. matter. Hold on. Time out. Someone just walked in the door. Oh, interesting. I have my phone ready to call 911. Never mind, that may have been, um, what's your name that lives upstairs? Uh, I may have been hearing I, her door. I can't no. remember, uh, but I know. I, mean I, know. Door. I can't think of it. 
Yeah, the the property manager or whatever. Yeah, she does. She's not a listener or watcher, so this is inoffensive. But I do. I know her name. I just can't think of it. I couldn't think of the word obliques today either. I'm, I want to say it's Alex, but I think that's just because we've been overrun by Alex's in the last two months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude. Like that's so it's cool to see. Like you know, we found each other. You found Ellie. Like that. Those those uh, elements that round you out and. And I'm finding myself. And you're finding yourself. So yeah. there I am. Hey. <laughs> All right. So what are we doing today? Other than uh, complimenting Eric and making him feel better because his uh, his newest employee basically told him she was a better coach. I told him, I was like, I need you guys, you guys need to understand how sensitive I am. <laughs> 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 you need to talk me off a ledge sometimes. Um, this no, looks I, good on camera. Doesn't it? That's, yeah. a, that's one of my favorite stickers. Way that to one. go, Snowman. How's this, how's this one look? How does that one look? That one look it looks good. good. Be on the lookout. I wonder how people, but how are people going to be able to get these stickers if we can't come to the gym? So weird. Ugh, yeah, I, wish I don't know. Oh, out. well, we'll have to, we'll just um, have to wait, I guess. Um, so, uh, so this worked out perfectly because the last two weeks in a row, we went with the documentary series. And it was going to be a couple of weeks until the one that we've been leading up to the fittest was going to come out. After we're going to have to like put that one off for a couple of weeks. And it lined up so perfectly. Cause did you not get as excited as me when they announced coming March 24th, fittest meet met their pre-release. I pre-ordered it, man. You sent me the link and I was like, done pre-ordered. it. I want to be a and, part uh, of the solution. Yes. And so I was like, Oh, this couldn't be, it's as if it's as if, Heber and Mars were listening to our podcast and they're like, oh, we can't break up their series. They got to get this one. Let's go ahead and get it early so they can talk about it. Hey, they're the buttery bros. We're the two bros in a box. Bros right. got to hook each other up. Two bro radio. That's right. Two, uh, soon to be two bros radio. Um, we're but, a media uh, company now. Yeah, that's right. No, we're not. Waterfront Maritime Industry. We're a warehouse marine storage location. Marine storage. Just to clarify that. Here's right. how you clean your boat. <laughs> So, so actually, uh, maybe we could, is Prestige open? Are they working? Uh, you know, I haven't noticed. I feel like there's some things in and out. I'm curious as to how they're enforcing the, who's, a, who's uh, essential and who's not. I'm sure they could find it. I'm sure they could find a way to justify themselves being essential. Because, I mean, they, yeah. do, they do. They do. If that's your transportation, right? Like um, yeah. car, uh, like repair shops and stuff are open. And Prestige is, a. I mean, part of their, big part of them is repair and maintenance and stuff. And so... If your boat's part of your industry, like if you need your boat to do boat stuff, they yeah. need to be open to service it. So I'm into boat I, stuff. Yeah, I don't think it's a. I don't. I wouldn't. I'm not saying that like as a. They're working around the rules. I think they legitimately are part of that essential. Like they keep they keep stuff running. So. Yeah. It's. I think there's a lot of ways to like make it work. I feel like it was a very. Well, we don't. We don't need to go into this. We're talking about the fittest. <laughs> Good job. Whew. This is why we do this on Tuesday, folks, not Thursday. You know, we're done talking about that. We're closing the door on it. Okay. Okay. You used it. Yes. Well done. Um, so, yeah. So, the fitness came out. We were, I was stoked. So, we're recording on Thursday as opposed to our normal Tuesday because I was like, Jack, let's push it back a couple of days so we can actually get a chance to watch it. Yeah. I've watched it almost two times. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah. So, we're here today to talk about the – essentially, the – not the final, but the latest um, CrossFit iteration of CrossFit Media, but actually it's independent now, right? They are they are solely um, they I mean self funded through their YouTube um, vlog and uh, you know the two Buttery Bros Inc. I forget all the different I didn't write that down, but all the different like entities that funded it all internal. And yeah. not internal, but self-generated. Like they did all their own fundraising through sponsorships and whatever. And it's, I mean, I'm the sheer scope of what they pulled off, what those guys pulled off is pretty damn impressive. Which if you think about it too, is isn't is a relatively like short time when you think yeah. about like how much they had to put together and on top of their own project being yeah. you're fired. <laughs> yeah. Find a job. Oh, by the way, like, good luck with the rest of your life. And I mean, yeah. not that I know the guy personally, but Marston also went through a divorce. Yeah. So, I mean, like, there's, there's a lot of stuff 
that came down and they put out a product, you know, right from the get go. Like if this is Ro e e Ebert, Roger and Ebert, um, or just Ebert and Ebert, or which one, one of them passed e away. Ebert Cannon. No, I know. I'm talking about the movie guys. Yeah. Yeah, so, Roger. Yeah, Siskel, oh, I remember Siskel and Ebert. And Siskel and Ebert. That's it. That's it. Yeah, Jesus. Siskel okay. passed away, right? Yeah. So, so anyway, from the beginning, thumbs up. Like, huge, two thumbs up in this one. Like, yeah. It was awesome. And not just, like, awesome from a, I, I mean, I'll watch any CrossFit videos. My buddy... Um, is a uh, firefighter, paramedic, whatever. I don't even know how he calls him, what he calls himself up in Massachusetts. Gobar, my, uh, my salty old crusty friend. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I checked in with him. I said, uh, hey, I heard, uh, I heard this thing goes after the, uh, you know, the grumpy old people with smelly feet. And I immediately thought of you, man. Everything going all right up there? And uh, he laughed. You know. <laughs> nice. nice. And, uh, but he said uh, it was a big <laughs> couple, 24 hours. I had a barn fire and so then i texted back i said man that was a barn burner <laughs> see what i did there uh, but um it's like a 15 minute video of just a dude standing filming the fire and people responding to the fire and i'm like clicking i'm like is there something i should be seeing here is there like something was it a was it a barn fire or was it disney world burning down it was disney world burning down you okay. can, do you want me to send it to you so you can show it to fiona sorry sure, honey, the park burned down here look here's the video of it um but the, uh, I said to him, I said, are watching movies about fires for firemen like CrossFitters watching videos of people doing thrusters? Oh, yeah. Where nobody else cares and nobody understands it, but I'll watch that shit all day long. I watch people exercise all day. All as day. Long, all as day. long as it's CrossFit, though. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to see you doing side bends and, you know, leg raises unless you call it, like, EMOM side bends and like right? yeah then it's cool <laughs> it, as long as you're doing an amrap 19 right <laughs> anyway he didn't text back yet but um that's yeah. the way it felt i was like i have no idea what i'm watching but i'm sure firemen love this does love this stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but anyway back to the fittest two thumbs up and not just saying that because i'll watch people exercising all day it's it was really well done and I, I don't, I, I'm, I watch some of it with the commentary, but it's Matt Fraser's commentary or there's yeah. like different people commentary. And oh, I, yeah, I, I didn't, commentary, I didn't yeah, get yeah. to watch it all the way through with the different commentary. I want to know. So here's, here's my one thing. There is a definitive line between, <laughs> there is a definitive line between the athletes who were cut and the athletes who made it to the top 10. And that line is like, I mean, the narrative that those two sides tell of their experience at the games is like just blatantly obvious. Yeah. I will put them in the categories of the losers are telling one story, uh -huh. the winners are telling a completely different story. And it is obvious. And if I'm a loser, and I'm not noticing it, you got work to do, man. I, I feel like there's another way you can break up the categories in this movie, which made, I was laughing the whole time. There are, there's no Olsen, and then there's everyone that really doesn't seem to like Noah Olsen. <laughs> like, I feel like it's very clear that it's like, they never, they never referred to him as Noah Olsen. They'd say, you know, I got to get this guy or, you know, I get, there's this, I feel like there's this, there's this very, and I think it's going back to, because you think of, I he think rubbed Chris Spieler's head and called him Speely. Cause he called him Speely. Um, I think it was during, uh, it was redeemed in the dominant when they had the, Kathy and I were talking about it yesterday, about when they had the, uh, the double banger. And, and he was hitting um, it with the handle. He was, or he's like hitting. hooking it. Yeah. And in that documentary, like Fraser said, Dinkle Nuts over here is like, <laughs> and uh, like you can tell. And then I think in this one, or in that one too, uh, uh, Fikowski was like, there's no way that he's faster than me. And then even, the, and I think, well, he did that in the double banger. So one of them said in the double banger, and then yeah, one of them said about the sled of this, there's no way he's faster than me. Right. But like, there's just like a, it's a very like, 
they don't like no, yeah. or there's something about him they don't hate him there's just something about him they're like whatever that guy over there but he's because fit- i wasn't yeah i didn't i can't say i was i i'll watch it i've watched it a thousand more times plus we bought it so i yeah. got it now um i'll watch it again and, and see for that um i will say that um I actually was impressed by Noah Olson that uh-huh. there was a scene where it's right before the um, first cut event. So the first event of the, of the games, they release it. Um, you know, there's Castro. He says, go to .com. It was two days ago's yeah. .com workout event. Number one cut first cut is the four rounds run rope climbs overhead. I think it was on .com that day. Like, I think it was .com's workout that day. Okay. Um, yeah. So they get down there on the field, and one of them interviews or just asks Noel Olson a real quick question. And, and it might even be before the workout was released. I think it was the parade of athletes. And, uh, and Olson says, um, he's real positive. He's like, you know, I'm just excited to be here. I, you know, I don't care if we know. He's like, I hope, I hope the whole week goes this way. And Katrin has a very similar story. David Starter has a very similar story. Like, the ones who are – like he threw out the entire thing, Noah Olson. He's like, I'm just here to enjoy this. Like it felt like they kept trying to ask him, like, well, what do you expect? What do you want? And he's like, I'm just enjoying it. And when he gets, he loses his first place, right? He was super excited to win that first event yeah. ever. And he was so like, and it came right off of when I got a second in an event. Like, this yeah. is just really cool. I will say sometimes the words he chooses, I'm like, you know, whatever, yeah. how to describe it. But I mean, whatever, he's figuring it out on the fly. He always had a consistency of positive attitude. And in that, I was not surprised to see how well he did. You know, yeah. and where, oh, I just I don't think these cuts are going to work. And I think, it's, uh, I think it's unfair to expect an athlete to, um, to have to be able to train like this. They don't know what's coming. Usually at this point in the games, we'll have already known two of the workouts. We can prepare correctly, blah, blah, blah. Those guys didn't make the cut. Yeah, and I, I, that's one thing. I've always – there's always something about Noah Olsen and I, that's always kind of like, ugh. But I, but I feel like he is probably just like the nicest freaking dude. Like that, he loves the fans. Yeah. And I think sometimes in his mind, he feels like – everyone's always watching him. And of course, when you have that leader jersey on, you probably are being watched. But like that dude will stop everything he's doing to go talk to this person that recognizes him, take a picture with him, pet their dog, sign whatever they want, ask how they're doing, chat it up with them. Like he will be like, he's, he's not too good. Like sometimes I feel like he might think he's bigger than the thing across it. Like Matt Fraser is the biggest CrossFit athlete in the world and outside of the world across it, people don't know who he is. Sometimes I think Noah Olsen thinks he's bigger than, like, he thinks he's bigger than he is, but he's not too big for the people that are making him big. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Um, I think uh, for me. The words he uses sometimes. "Ah," But I know what you're saying. For me, I am, I'm trying to get away from, like, I don't, I don't know who he is. I've never met the guy. That's not true. I met him at regionals one time um but, you did? I didn't know that. Uh, well he we were, it was the mid-atlantic it was the atlantic regionals down in atlanta and he yeah. was there it was the year we took maddie and uh and you know he's shorter than i am which like and he's i mean he's he's probably as wide as he is tall like he is yeah huge like he is ridiculously strong it is yeah. amazing um yeah. but he was nice you know what i mean and so yeah. I, but i don't know him and yeah. so every opinion i make is based off of watching this, all of them, watching them on TV. And so I try to reserve, like, I will make zero judgments about him as a person. Yeah. And actually try and reserve judgment about his actions or whatever, because it's all edited, right? So I don't know right. what the buttery bros, what kind of narrative they're trying to get. Here's my takeaway, though. Using him as an example of if I'm watching this film as both a documentary, but there's there is obviously a trajectory that the, that the creators of it want me to take away. Yeah. And what I want, whether, whether this is where they wanted it to go or not, the metaphor or the theme that kind of kept coming out for me is CrossFit defined fitness 
in 2001 when Glassman releases the What is Fitness article, or is it 2002, the What is Fitness article in the journal. And it is improved work capacity across broad time and modal domains. And it is the ability to be prepared, generally physically prepared for the unknown and the unknowable. And the CrossFit Games in 2007 was the proving ground to test whether that methodology can find the fittest man and woman in the world. That was Glassman's challenge to himself. And it has evolved from, for almost 10 or over 10 years now, almost 15 years now. Mm -hmm. I think we're coming up on this will be the 15th games or 14th games. Mm -hmm. um, that Dave Castro can legitimately say, yeah, it changes every year. The feeling that these athletes were entitled to some sort of consistency or known factor is their fault for not going back and looking at the way this thing came about and what is it actually testing. It's yeah. testing your ability to be generally physically fit for anything. Yeah. And the fact that Henshaw got on and said, this is unfair to these athletes. These critical. athletes are defining fitness. He's wrong. And that's where I don't know if that's an edit. I don't know if he misspoke. I don't know if I'm interpreting it incorrectly the way he meant to say it. But they're not defining fitness. Fitness was defined by CrossFit. This right. is CrossFit's test saying improve work capacity across broad modal, broad time and modal domains. He or she who does more work faster and moves larger loads, longer distances in a shorter amount of time, that person is the fittest. And the test that Castro designed in the 2019 games tested that. The fact that your workout, your strengths didn't come first doesn't mean the fittest 10 people weren't ready for the last set of tests. Yeah. So the fact that the strength test didn't come first doesn't matter because you've got to be fast to be strong. And the fact that you weren't fast means I just removed you from the equation earlier. I don't care, right? That be faster. Yeah. And I love, um, I, was it Henshaw that said too, I think it was Henshaw that said, you know, for that, that one, that, that final cut of 10, that sprint being like a, a specialty event to be the last one to finalize the field is I don't remember his words exactly. I'm paraphrasing, but it, that it wasn't the, maybe it wasn't a fair test. Maybe it wasn't the best test. It was not the right test to finalize the final 10. He's and wrong. I, I mean, he's 100% wrong. He saw, and I think, and I think Castro said it too. The cream always rises to the top and that's exactly what happened. You saw a lot of the familiar faces. You can say you want, like any time that was running, Vellner was right you know, so here's the deal maybe Vellner maybe Vellner wins the clean event right he makes right. it and he he gets to win the clean event I don't care right if I'm Dave Castro I don't care like yeah. yes you are strong but there are 10 general physical skills you're not fast enough to be testable for of the fast who's strongest so then you make okay flip the events doesn't matter because the people who were in the top five were still strong enough that they would have still made the cut to then test their speed. But all those speed people wouldn't have been fast enough. Yeah. So, so cut it to five, right? Like, I'll just keep making the cut. Cut it to the final three and let's just test them. Like, that's the thing. It's not, it's not the test to find the top 10 fittest people in the world, men and women. Mm -hmm. It's the test to find the, the fittest. fittest person in the world and, and I think the and game I, and the game got them to 10 so that they could keep logistically doing what they're going to do yeah. what it changed was Annie Annie Thorstadter said it which was awesome she said this game was the hardest I've ever had because you had no room to have a bad event yeah. the stakes every single time were as high as they could possibly be well guess what if I'm jumping out of the plane if I'm running into the debt, if I'm running into the house, if I'm taking a hill, whatever it is, right? If we make this equation back to like a combat or like a, you know, a war type of metaphor, you don't get an off day. 
right? <laughs> you don't get to yeah. say like, you know what, enemies, today, not, not in my best form. Can we just, can we call this a, let's, let's just, I'm going to call this my throwaway event. Yeah. You don't get a throwaway event. Every event matters. So you got to train your weakness because in the end, your limitation will be at the edges of you, the, the edges of the exposure of your exposure, right? I think that your, your limits are, ah, I'm totally screwing up the quote, but basically you're only as good as your weakest link. Yeah. And we I, found I, it. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. What yeah. And I think it's, um, I, uh, and like you said, the narrative of those two groups, I, I mean, I feel like Fikowski and Valner always have something to be critical of. <clears throat> um, I love those guys as athletes and I love, I love to hear them talk. I think they always have really interesting things to say. And I love how they're, they will question things. Like they, they don't care what people are going to say about them. They're going to question things. Yeah. Say it unfiltered. And, um, and they'll call this person out. They'll call that person out. Um, but, uh, but I love, uh, like Brooke Wells is someone who she lost that sprint event. Like she would have made the top 10 had she not stepped on that line. Right. Right. And she was really upset, and I and I may be wrong, but I never, I feel like I never saw it. She was really upset. She was heartbroken. She maybe didn't love the event, but she went all out on it. She didn't complain about like it's unfair that I didn't make it because I stepped on a line. Like that was the rule. That's what they were told. Um, she didn't, I don't think she was complaining about it. Not but she she loves lifting heavy barbells. She's known for moving heavy weight. I feel like it. Did she complain about there not being something heavy for her? No. No, no and I, she, she went after it. And, and actually, Valner, um, I, agree, I agree with you, the fact that they, they accurately represented these athletes and gave them the opportunity to yeah. express themselves. Valner said, I knew I had to go for broke. So I pushed the limit. And in pushing the limit, I, I pushed myself into an error. So basically, when they said, even without stopped, that penalty, he doesn't make the top 10. Right. Yeah. And Brooke Wells, she didn't say it exactly that way, but she kind of said it very similar in that it, right? Like that's, you, you fail at the margins of your exposure. There you go. Yeah. Um, that's it. She failed at the margin of when, when she was trying to run as, like, just do it. Like run as fast as you can, your form starts to fall down. Mechanics, consistency, intensity she was pushing the intensity because she knew she had to yeah. her mechanics fell apart she stumbled went wide touched the line there you go like that's it's a it was a good rule i mean it's an artificial boundary that was placed to say your precision and accuracy one of two of the 10 generals and your coordination three of the general 10 general physical skills are going to get tested in a core in addition to your power your speed, your endurance, your stamina. We're going to test these other ones too. We're going to say, you got to stay in this lane. Three, two, one, go. And, and I think there's also, good point. Like, I didn't think about it that way. Like, we're testing that. But also to say, like, you can't cut in front of this person to try and get yourself. Like, if there's no boundary there, who's to say you're not cutting in front of this person to keep them from finishing and that sort right. of thing? Right. So, again, like, uh, like a, Castro has never demonstrated that these things happen on accident. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the dude thinks of an idea, runs through the idea, tests the idea, retests the idea, tests it again, tests it till it breaks, walks it back, tweaks it, tests it again, then kind of goes, okay, now what will it look like in execution? Tests yeah. the execution, then puts it into practice. And the whole time he's watching it like, hmm, all right, that was the 96.3 solution. I'm going to push it to the guy and get the 98% solution. Yeah. So the fact that there were boundaries and lines and that it got briefed, he, I just have to trust. He knew exactly what he was doing and he got the results. He pushed people past. I mean, these are, the, these are people that do things that are superhuman, right? Yeah. Like they're in a box at any local affiliate and we're not moving anymore. We're just standing there watching them because they are. And Our workouts the, are warm-ups for them. <laughs> like, it, not even, right? Like it, it is, 
they are on another planet when it comes to their physical human ability, their human physical ability to do what they do. Yeah. So watching them on that stage, he has, Castro has to design a test that is to push their boundaries. It, it's got to incorporate more than just physical tests. Uh-huh. And those cuts messed them up. Yeah. <laughs> And it was awesome. Catherine said at one point, she goes, she doesn't know why she was just so exhausted. And right. I mean, it's over at three and I'm tired. And he made, and he made this suggestion like, well, it is the CrossFit Games. Like you've just done a bunch of work. But you can tell like they were also so much more mentally taxed. Oh, like, yeah. You've got to like, you've got to, like you said, no bad events. So now I feel like we're talking about the games and not so much the doc. But, so um, I think that's the yeah. testament to the documentary. Yeah. is that those guys captured, as I'm watching it, I, I, I usually will watch something and I'll cook or I'll watch and I'll do some other work or whatever. I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. my mouth agape. Like I'm just, I'm staring at this and I'm, I know who wins. <laughs> yeah. Like I know that Frazier takes the jersey back. And yet I'm like, oh, is he going to do it? Right. right? <laughs> They, it's like like with good movies, like you know the ending. Like whenever I watch Seven, I was like, "Please don't have her head in the box." What's Please in the box? Her. What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't see dead people. Please don't, don't see dead people. Yeah. Right? Like it's, that. So yes, like, and then actually that shifts us to sort of the structure and the tone and the style of it. I loved the they they the this was by far the best one ever made yeah like they it's linear so it just it follows from the end of the eight a little bit before the 18 the end of the 18 games yeah. and you you kind of know what's going on and then the hammer falls and it just doom, 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 it follows this line so it's got this you know base narrative through line you can even see there are three definitive acts there's a three-part element to it um yep. and where the cuts are 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 very clear but then there's little flashbacks. There's little like side stories with individual athletes, Tia and Matt training together, um, Katrin's stuff. There's like an amazing inclusion that if you've been watching the Buttery Bros vlog, it's the trips that they took yeah. that I was afraid those little interludes would be sort of vloggy. Does that make sense? Vloggy? Vloggy. Like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I get a little fatigued <laughs> with yeah, the yeah. vlog. Not because it's a bad thing. It's just, it's just that they're testing in style. We talked about it before. Like, yeah. there's stylistic elements to it. I feel like that sun is really now washing me out. Um, but I'm not going to move. I'll just move closer to the camera. Um, but they didn't. It, they totally folded it in yeah. and kept it coherent with the style of the whole film yeah and so from if you know they're both they're both the film they're filming everything they're directing everything they're writing everything their editing skills and the way they put it together i found to be both impressive but just so enjoyable like i really i was the the cathartic build to the climax of the of the movie itself yeah felt like a feature film and i was in, i that was really well done it's I, love the, uh, I love that side of it like i love i feel like i'm watching the avengers right which also i love tommy marquez and um i love when tommy marquez and um uh sean woodlin because i feel like they're like me and that They'll talk, they'll, they love their superheroes and they love their pro wrestling. So I like, I hope I can be a guest on their podcast one day and not talk about anything cross and just talk about those <laughs> things. Because like Tom Marquez said it, I love that they addressed, I'll come back to it real quick. I love that they addressed the, the, the HQ cuts early on. Like they kind of knocked, they talked about that like right from the get-go. Said, here's what happened. Here's what it felt like. Here's what it gave us an opportunity to do. Boom, here's what we did. And they kind of left it. They didn't dwell on it and they didn't, like created as this, I don't know. They got so it. Here's, the, here's your challenge, man. Reach out to them. Tell them, tell them that we want to have them on our podcast to talk about how the last year, last year and a half, if, um, 
Avengers Infinity War is the, you know, 2017, 2018 season, the snap of the finger is the big firing. This has been Avengers Endgame. How's it playing out? What's the, what are the connections? How do we, you know what I mean? Like that would be the, make the connection, make the metaphorical uh, bridges between those two things. Swing for the fences, brother. See if they'll, see if they'll come on and talk to us. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> Done. All right. Um, but yeah, but I'm with you. Like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm watching the Avengers. I like that, like that, the music that they use, you know, yeah. like it. There's, go ahead, go ahead. It's just that soundtrack that they use. It feels like this build up to the final battle. And even the music like progresses as you go. It's not the same like throughout like you can feel the music build as they get to that final event but it gets you so hyped every single time i do also like i love every second counts and i feel like yes it's a crossfit documentary but it's so it feels like this grassroots documentary i love the fittest i feel like you're comparing apples and oranges just because they're on the same topic and blah 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 so I love this part, but I still love the grittiness of this as well. Um, but uh, but you said it's so. In a sense, in a sense, there was a uh, a little bit of a um, an homage to every second counts because a lot of the footage at the briefings is a handheld. Handheld, yeah. right? It's 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 bouncy. There's a sense of like they're in the stands or they're in yeah. the crowd because they were. Right, like they, they were filming it, and you see Heber. There's a shift, and a shift to him, and he's just kind of got their you know steady cam. But yeah. some of that footage is from not an iPhone, but it's from a from a non or it's you, you know what I mean. Like it's a very low grade, it, and you can see the difference between that footage and the field footage and stuff. So in a sense, I I I'm agreeing with you in that what this film had more of than any other is this beautiful blending of stock and kind of high-end, highest quality footage. Yeah. And then like behind the scenes, like in the moment, gritty homegrownness, because it's, it's them, it's those two, yeah. Heber and Marston, like on the road, catching these guys in their, you know, in the moment with stuff. And it feels like it's more, especially when you have the handheld stuff, it's that more relatable, like you feel like you're getting this from a spectator's perspective, as opposed to from HQ's right. perspective, which is very filtered. And so, um, like I love at the press conference when, when someone asked Castro about some of the more familiar athletes not being there. And he's like, it's not about who has the most Instagram followers, it's about who's the fittest. And like, because of where they were, and because of that angle, um, I, you felt like uh, as soon as he said that, I was just like, "Oh!" Like, did you, you see know? who was sitting? Did you see who was sitting at the table with him? Oh, it was Fraser and Katrin, and uh, it was it was who was Brooke it? It was, Wells? Uh, it was Fraser, Katrin, and Brooke Wells. Oh, she was at the table. I didn't even notice. Okay, and cool. it was after the cut, so yeah. she didn't cut. Yeah, and it was awkward. Yeah, and they and you know Castro. Castro loves Brooke Wells, and they so panned, cool. and you saw Brooke Wells kind of like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like this, like, and I, like, I felt so bad for her, but also I was like, I don't really know if you needed to go there, Dave. Like, but I appreciate that you don't really, <laughs> you don't mince your words oh, or. <laughs> Some people are sad about like not seeing the more popular athletes. What does popularity have to do with finding the fit? I mean, right, he, but he's, that's what he's saying, but that's not what he said. Yeah. <laughs> and because it's because just, Brooke is known for having a very... Right, right. Um, there, was a, there was a lot of uh, subtext happening yeah. in that, that scene. So I don't think Which, that was a shot again, of her, but that's a very common... Yeah. The, the talent of those two, the fact that they were in the right place to capture that footage that they knew that they had that footage and right. that they edited it and put it, put it in a narrative um, place, a place in the narrative, uh -huh. that, that's amazing. Like they, they did that. 
they captured that for us and w were able to craft that into a story that it all made sense. And it was, yeah, it's, it's dramatic. They did, an, they did an awesome job of creating a drama that isn't just, I mean, it is. If you don't like CrossFit and you don't see the, the worth in any of this, then you're going to be bored out of your mind and it's like, okay, whatever. Um, oh, look, they're doing more pull-ups. Right, but if you like, but if you do like it, if you like, if you enjoy this sport of fitness, it's phenomenal. I kind of look at it like um, the Rogue, uh, like uh, Full Sturker and the Scottish one. Oh, yeah. I forget what the oh. Scottish one's called. Like, if that kind of stuff is like, what? Um, it's, it's on par. I think, though, if you, I think those are amazing films. Absolutely phenomenal. They're free on YouTube. Highly recommend. Um, just Rogue. Uh, God, I forget which series they're called. They're just Rogue movies. And, yeah. Um, Full, Full Sturker is the, uh, the Icelandic oh. one. Oh, yeah. I can't remember so, yeah. the Scottish one. Um, yeah. Phenomenal. And it, it's a bunch of huge dudes and women lifting big rocks <laughs> and putting and dropping them, carrying them and dropping them. Which is but like, you can say the person like, hey, there's this great documentary on people lifting rocks. Right. But it gives a history of them and how that fits within the culture, how as like nautical fishing villages, how this thing developed, how it became a sport, how it's defined cultures and communities, how it's gotten them through famine and horrible moments and blah, 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 blah. Like there is a social historical aspect to it that is deeper and richer than just people lifting stones. This didn't quite get there. I don't think fittest is there yet, but what I see is like, the beginnings of as movie makers, as filmmakers, those two are, are knocking at that door. That this film was more than just a bunch of people working out. There was something to it as like, this is a, this is a cultural phenomenon that, uh, that transforms people's lives. And that's, I think, if, if they continue to make these movies, that might be a, element that they're going to need to probably uh, incorporate or figure out how to make it more than just you know the the winner at the end does that does that make sense yeah totally i i, and I really want to see them more like i loved frowning i love the the that style focused on one person like i'd love to see them do some more of those like a fraser or a katrin or a um i mean a lot of us can like kind of know their stories but i love that like behind the scenes some of those athletes. So I'd love to see them do more of that, but I would love to see them do like, what do they do outside? Of course yeah. it's also, they're good at, they're good at CrossFit. Like that's their passion, but what do they, I'd be curious to see what they could do outside of the CrossFit. Yeah. I think it'd be cool too. Like, so something like Carl, Carl Saunders, right? Yeah. So she taking the year off, had the baby, she's back. She's coming to the games this year. Right. Yeah. I mean, she is like, she's so awesome. Within like six it. months of having a kid, she gets like, 18th worldwide or fifth, whatever like top 10 yeah. worldwide in the open like are you kidding me i love she's running a gym you know what i mean like she yeah. runs an affiliate i can barely keep my head on one wire and i'm a you know relatively mediocre athlete and i can you know we we got and i got you like i get i got two people doing it and, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah like yeah you okay you coughing are you all right I was at the grocery store and there were like uh, 90,000 senior citizens there. So, so. <laughs> it's funny. Someone, someone said to me the other day, they're like, they're opening the grocery store stores early for seniors. I'm like, what time are they opening them? And they're like six o'clock. I was like, I don't know. The grocery store always opens at six o'clock. It's just seniors are always in there at like 10 a.m. when the bus drops them off from the like living. So center. they're bringing them in a little early. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so we digress but that's i would be i think that would be a cool like and maybe they are maybe they're capturing footage of her um story right yeah. like the um and i i think of like i don't always want to see the winner i i actually like the idea of um it's kind of the um nike's uh the two hour right the i forget what it's called um but it follows the three guys who go to try to break two hour marathon I I it's that. on Netflix um, or, or one of the, one of the providers, amazing hour and a half of, of film, just how Nike created this lab to get these guys the optimal environment to run it 
but it's following their lives and seeing their training regimen and starts debating like, well, one, one has a shot if he gets his head right. One has a shot if he stays healthy. One has a shot if whatever. And in the end, none of them make it. They yeah. all fall short. Yeah. And so, sorry, spoiler alert. Anyone knows, I, I do that all the time. But whatever, it's been out forever. It's not my fault you didn't watch it. Um, <laughs> FYI, there's a head in the box at the end of seven. Yeah. Spoiler alert. And it's Ben Paltrow's. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, the, the drama is the failure, right? And that's, that's sort of my uh, you know, postmodern pension, you know, literary pension of I like unhappy endings because they feel more realistic and a little dark. And it's like, yeah, yeah shit doesn't hold, right? Like yeah. most of the time you're gonna fail. And so it's not about, I do like watching the winner and I like the happy ending, but it's still my complaint of end game. It's unrealistic, right? It's a superhero, right? Unrealistic. We're talking about aliens and people with superpowers like, dude, but it's like, it was cool. And I get all excited when like all the little things show up and everyone shows back up and it's like, you think this will be enough? You know, like, uh, it's awesome. And it's like, yes, I feel good. Yeah everybody wins but i kind of wanted i kind of liked the end of infinity war i like when Thanos wins <laughs> why well, I, I sorry you get me that you get me going we're never gonna be able to <laughs> save it. okay jack you're right it wasn't the happiest of endings or it was it was a happy ending and they aren't awesome perfect <sighs> not gonna go it is um, i mean it like it also was the great... line also the line was is this everyone oh are you expecting, were you expecting, now I messed it up. It's all right, but you know what I meant. You know what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes. Uh, uh, so they've got that, I think, what, again, come back to the beginning. Two freaking thumbs up. They crushed it. It's a, it is an amazing feat that those two men put together, and I'm sure they had help, but without yeah. a hitch, as a consumer of the media, Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, yeah. whole, and for seven bucks on iTunes, now 14 or 15 bucks, like, holy crap, that's a good movie that is, is worth the money. And it's so heartening, like, ooh, if they were able to put that together in some of the hardest, toughest times professionally for them. Yeah, they were still trying to figure out what's next. And they... Wow. Like, I'm excited for all... Now, now we got all this, this stuff going down, so all the sanctions being covered. But hey, in times of great difficulty, some of the best drama what, this, comes out. This is going to be a new. This is going to be a cool documentary to see, following all of this going on. Like, how is how is CrossFit going to make it work? How are the athletes going to make it work? How yeah. is it going to shake up things? Assuming the CrossFit Games still even go on, and what that's going to look like. Like, this is an unprecedented thing that's going to make for a really cool. Just from again in the CrossFit sphere, like. How do they make this work? Yeah. So. Hey, and by the way, so um, a little pet peeve. Um, I, uh, I, the, the use of unprecedented um, to yeah. me feels very uh, inauthentic and overused because it's not unprecedented. The Olympics have been canceled before. World War II, right? Like um, baseball, they made a movie out of baseball has been canceled. It was called World War II. So I get it, like it, it, it is a extremely uncommon thing for an entire, for the world to have to respond to something as a global slash global pseudo community, uh -huh. but it's not unprecedented. Um, you know, the 1918 flu, Spanish flu epidemic, like whole towns shut down and were quarantined. Our fault of ignoring history at the expense of our behavior in the present mm -hmm. is not history's fault. It's our fault for not looking back and saying, this has happened before. Things have had to happen and people have made choices and they've made choices in the moment without the knowledge of historical precedent at their own expense. And we're kind of doing that again because we're stuck on this. This is unprecedented. This has never happened. No, it, it hasn't happened in your lifetime, and therefore you think it's unprecedented. It's not unprecedented. Read a book. Like, go.
go back, ask a historian, find a friend who's a historian and ask him or her and say, I think of our podcast with the dot with, um, uh, Laura and, um, uh, oh my God, <laughs> my, his, it, uh, Dr. Oh. Laura and her partner and I get yes. Hamilton, Hamilton, Hamilton's Hamilton. a historian. And we asked him what's as this, has he seen this before? And it was like, he was like, right about to explode. He goes, actually <laughs> around 1913, yeah. there was a whole functional fitness movement. They had the games in Madison square garden, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then world war one happened and it got associated with fascism and it got associated with, um, German imperialism mm -hmm. and it lost the, the guy who invented it was contracted by the Italians to come train his troops. And it, when that happened, it got a bad name and it lost its flavor for the you know, West, Western democracies. Right. And so in a sense, this stuff has like, there have been cancellations of expected events and things before. Yeah. The unprecedentedness is inaccurate. The question is, how do people handle the uh, the challenges and the obstacles to come to come through and continue to improve or get um, I don't know to to make things happen. So that it's not you. I've been I've I've been using it too. I much. Say, well, I appreciate it because I'm very guilty of using the word unprecedented a lot. You're absolutely right. Like this isn't the first time. It feels because it's in the present and because maybe it hasn't necessarily happened in our lifetime, it seems like the biggest thing that's ever happened in the world. And it's definitely not. So you're right. I've actually been using that word a lot. And I'm like, oh, you know what? He makes a really good freaking point. It's not. Yeah. That so, but so, and it's, so it's, it, it, what it is, is it limits us into thinking like, I've got to figure this all out. You don't, right. You just, yeah. just say, okay, wait a second. I'm going to assume that somebody else somewhere has solved this problem at some point. So I'm going to go back and like, what did they do? Ah, oh, okay. They did it this way and this way. I don't have to do it that way. I've got better technology or I've got different access, but what I can do is when they solved it, it had this, 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 and this negative ramification or downstream effect. I don't want to repeat those. So I'm going to use a similar solution, but I'm going to take into account all this other stuff. There, I, not to say that not, this is not a political podcast, but I think it was uh, um, the governor of New York, right? Uh, or mayor. Um, what, oh, man. <laughs> We're so bad. My I life doesn't pronounce his name. Memory. It's Qu Cuomo, Cuomo. I can't, I just can't, like, I have difficulty pronouncing it. Just say uh, mayor of New York. There you go. He said, we can have both a healthy, and economically viable solution. We uh -huh. don't have to sacrifice our health for our economics, and we don't have to sacrifice our economics for our health. We can figure out how to do both. Yeah. And in that challenge, I was like, I was a really, it was in response to, I think, President Trump's like, the country will be open by Easter. You know, that, that idea of, of like, hey, whether I agree, disagree, whatever, whatever, it's sort of like pitting unnecessarily these two things into conflict with each other, where the you know, mayor of New York is saying, like, we don't have to pit them against each other. We can make them both work. And yeah. I, I thought that was, a, that was a, a more prescient and aware saying or a way of approaching it. It's the same thing here, right? Like, well either the CrossFit games are going to have to happen or da, da, da. it's like, no, I think, no. I think there's, there's a solution or a way to when things have been tough in the past or there have been, um, you know, seemingly insurmountable obstacles placed in front of a group of people, what kinds of solutions did they come up with to still get to the end zone? And that, that's the, the second I start saying things are unprecedented, I put myself in a position to limit me to realize I can learn from history. Because I say, all those guys back there, they were jackasses. They were dumb. They couldn't figure it out. They don't know what I know. Yeah. Instead of saying like, actually, I don't know anything. Let me look and see what did, what did they do to figure it out. There you go. That was a good one.
that's my that's my rant you feel good now i feel better thanks i appreciate it i do like you said I, it's uh yeah it's it's perspective it's a very and i think it's a much needed perspective at this time so uh you're a good man jack ryan and a smart one too and a pretty one <laughs> uh right. i'm cold now i should have put my vest on well cool let's land this plane all right um, close the door on it close the <laughs> Close the door on that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gratuities. Gratuities. Uh, uh, my gratitude. Oh, man. I don't know. You need a second? I didn't think about this one. I totally. You need a second? What's up? You need a second? Sure. You go first. Uh, so mine is. <laughs> and I meant to. Uh, um, uh, so I just video the other day. So uh thrive gymnastics has been doing the facebook like a lot of people doing the, the the um facebook live classes and uh and um i'm just really excited they're doing that i i can greatly appreciate the time and effort uh that goes into putting that and so by i did that little class it was emily is um fiona's regular teacher at thrive when she goes to her classes it was only like 10 or 15 minutes, but man, Fiona loved it. And like the way they're kind of making it work, they're teaching gymnastics to like little kids in their living room. And so it was doing, it was the, the theme this month has been uh, jumping like yeah. for March. And they're still like, Hey, if you're, you know, set some pillows down and jump from pillow to pillow, we're going to work on our rolls. And it was real simple. And um, I don't know. I just, I appreciate those little efforts so much because it's the things that I was doing regular with regularly with Fiona as part of our day. It's been really challenging to find things to like that are outside of her routine. It's been tough for her to adjust because she doesn't understand what's going on. And that little thing was so nice because it was also like, it was, I did it with her, but it gave me a chance. Like even if it was 15 minutes to kind of take a breath and not feel like I had to come up with all the things to keep Fiona, um, occupied or entertained without yeah. just putting her in front of the TV, even though it was kind of in front of the TV, but she was active and she was doing stuff and she was having a great time. And I let, I was able to let someone else kind of take the reins and just let, and just kind of follow along. So my gratitude is Thrive Gymnastics and coach Emily and all the coaches there um, for being creative. And That's cool. cool. That's good. Um, I would say mine is for uh, definitely uh, uh, Andrew Duncan. Uh, he just, he randomly texted me a couple days ago and we went back and forth and we kind of reconnected on stuff and we just talked through some, through some things and I didn't realize, um, I thought I was cool. I was totally fine. Things were going good. I didn't realize I wasn't. And, uh, having, I don't know if just something was in the air, the atmosphere and he felt, uh, I don't know. I don't know why I was the, the, the number he decided to text, but it, um, it completely unstuck a lot of stuff that was stuck and um, inertia, you know, motion is lotion, you know, inertia can bo be both paralyzing and it can also be empowering. And he, yeah. he got the train rolling for me on a lot of things and super grateful. So um, even last night, like we went back and forth again, of you know, just saying, so yeah, that's definitely mine. And I thought of that last night and I just couldn't remember because I got all political and uh, <laughs> again, again, yeah, awesome, stupid brain. Awesome. Um, anyway, that's it. Yeah, freaking awesome. love that guy. Every time I He's miss the hell dude. out of him. He's a good dude. Yeah, cool. It's that whole fam, that whole group. So. Yeah. Cool. Hey, what do you call a um, a bear with no ears? <laughs> what? B. <laughs> Uh, shouldn't it be, what do you call a bunch of bears without ears? Bees? Bees. That works too. No, that still doesn't work because ears, so it'd have to be, what do you call a bear without an ear? Yeah. Bear, B. All right. I'm, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it was really funny. I laughed. <laughs> Thanks. That's the key. <laughs> I told the joke. Allie gave me a great joke. What are, uh, I think I told you what, what, um, what jo what kind of jokes are the CDC recommending right now? Yeah, inside jokes. Inside jokes. 
And let me tell you that. So I got that joke from Allie and people were not laughing. And I think it was a great joke. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. I think people are just like, because I do it so much, like if Allie told it, people would be cracking up. Right. But because it's me and I think people are like, we need to keep him here. Like just keeping him honest, like inside they're laughing, but we don't want to give him too much credit. (laughs) Hey, so did, should I tell my, should I tell my uh, Bill Gates joke? Have I heard that one? Yeah, I told last night, yesterday at the staff meeting. No, I only listened to like half a, I mean, yeah, yeah, go, yeah. oh yeah, that joke, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a great one, go ahead and tell it. Here, um, you know, Bill Gates uh, offered his help. He's gonna, he's gonna reboot 2020. He apologized for releasing the operating system with a known virus. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> And that was when uh, Shelly said, I think we should just unplug this thing and plug it back in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Tony had a really good one he told yesterday. I can't remember it. I'll have to save it for next week. But Tony's got some really good ones too. Cool. Awesome. All right, All right. man. I ran you late. You're two minutes late. It's 9.02. You going to be in trouble? We'll find out. All right. <laughs> if I don't see you next week for Grounds After Rounds. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, brother. All right, folks. We'll see you off the creek. That's my two fingers, one love. Two fingers, one love. Gotcha. There you go. Adios. But but zero tolerance. (laughs) Later.